today on Fixing the Money Thing. The title of our series is Shadow Wars because if you know it or not, you are in a war. And you can try to ignore it, but you are in a conflict. Now we're talking about a spiritual conflict. Obviously, there's a lot of conflicts happening here. But uh, the spiritual side of things, I believe, is motivating a lot of what you're seeing happening in the physical realm. Shadow Wars. Now, our key scripture that you need to understand and you need to learn where it's at, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Get your Bible out, your notes out. You'll need this. Be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The King James Version says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now, the Bible clearly tells us that you have an adversary. Do you know? Did you know that? His name is Satan, the devil. Lucifer, originally, we talked about that in the first section of this series. But you have an adversary. His intent, Jesus said in John 10, 10, is to kill, kill, steal, and destroy. To who? To you. He hates God despises you. You're made in the image of God. So we know we have an adversary, but Peter tells us we must be alert. Now, first you have to recognize you have an adversary to be alert to begin with. And as I said in the first part of the series, the large majority of the population doesn't even believe there is a devil or any kind of spiritual conflict. They don't believe there's a heaven or hell. Well, they're already done. Unless you you recognize you have an adversary, you're not going to be alert, are you? So Peter says to be alert and sober-minded. Keep the, your wit, keep, keep, keep your perception uh, looking and being perceptive of what's happening around you spiritually. Be alert. Kill, stealing, and destroying. But notice the Bible says here in 1 Peter chapter 5 that he's roaring as a lion, but he is seeking whom he may devour. You see, Jesus stripped him of all authority. Back in the prophetic of Genesis chapter 3, when Adam fell, God told Adam and Eve that his head would be crushed by the seed of the woman. He has no teeth. He has no authority. But, he, you know, you can be afraid with a roar, right? Because you've been trained to be afraid of a roar. And unless you know legally where you stand and that he doesn't have teeth, you'll back up. And you need to understand his tactics to gain entrance. So I remember one night probably at three in the morning, a friend of mine, young man, called me. I couldn't understand who he was at first. He was basically hyperventilating, and he was almost screaming in the phone. And he told me the story that he, re- he got home late after his wife had gone to bed, and he had the habit in this day of buying pornography, the VCR tapes, and taking them home and watching them when his wife's asleep at night and then hiding them and taking them back the next day. Now, of course, you don't do that. You use the Internet now. It's much more deceptive. In this particular night, as he was watching one of these movies, a woman actually appeared in his room. He says a gorgeous woman actually came into the room, a spiritual being. And as he was looking at her, all of a sudden, she changed into a hideous demon. He said he ran to the corner of the room and just covered, his, covered himself and just shook in fear. And then he called me. I believe the Holy Spirit was unveiling the, the truth behind what he thought was something harmless and something beautiful. But I believe that God was showing him, no, you need to understand, this is a plot for your life. You need to see what's behind this. And this is how the enemy works. He sets a masquerade up, a deception. We're going to talk about that today. So how did, how did Satan gain authority over Adam and Eve in the beginning? Because we know that Adam and Eve had all authority, right? And that they had the ability to rule over the entire earth on behalf of the government of God. So how did Satan get the authority? Adam had to give it to him. You said, no, he didn't take it. He took, no. Yeah, Adam gave it to him. I said, Adam gave it to him. Now, he was deceived, or actually Eve was deceived. They chose to give it to him. They believed Satan instead of God, and they followed after Satan instead of, they gave him the authority. Now, this is how Satan operates. 
He has no authority, but he wants your authority, and he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. He cannot unless you forfeit your authority. Now, we're going to talk about that. It's going to help you. You're going to be glad you're here today. I know that for a fact. So he deceived Eve. Amazingly, let's read the scripture out of Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing for the eye, and also desirable for gaining what? Wisdom. She took some and ate it, gave some to her husband. This is kind of crazy. Now, without going into a long discussion why the tree was there, but you need to know, I have a series called Trials and Tribulations in the bookstore that explains why Satan was in the garden, why the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was right beside the tree of life in the middle of the garden. It had to be, had to be. So you need to understand the legal side of what's happening here. It's not about the fruit in the sense of this tree, in the sense, it's, it's a sense of, of jurisdiction. Satan was on the earth before man showed up. He had the earth realm. And God had to give man, uh, Satan, an opportunity because man was created to rule over Satan. It would be illegal to place man over Satan unless Satan had an avenue to lure man into following him. That's just a real quick summary. So that's why the tree was right beside the tree of life. They were commanded not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because in doing so, they would have violated what God said and they were essentially choosing choosing to follow after Satan instead of God. Rebellion is a better term for it, okay? And so here's the interesting thing. This fruit was desirable for wisdom. Who told her that? Satan did. Funny thing is, she already had all wisdom. She already had all wisdom. Church, you need to understand this. You have all things. You have the entire kingdom of God. The enemy tries to deceive you into believing you're missing out on something. But you already have it. You have all of it. Now, you may not be enjoying it because you don't maybe understand who you are in the kingdom, how you don't know how things are operating yet. But the bottom line is you already have, you have it. She already had wisdom, right? She had all the wisdom there was. She has the spirit of God in her. She was anointed. She had no knowledge of sin. Her father, God, created her. She had all wisdom. But he lied to her. Deception is still the number one tactic that the enemy uses to steal, kill, and destroy in your life and, and to bring you into rebellion. Well, I would never rebel against God. Well, it's very, very subtle. For instance, if you don't believe the word of the king who's king of the kingdom, that's rebellion. Whose word do you believe? Now, you, I would agree you've been taught things that are not of the kingdom. You've been raised in a perverted culture that calls good evil and evil good. Satan makes sure he wants you to believe that his way of doing things is normal. It's the natural thing. It's what's going to happen. It's how life is. That is not true. But if you believe that, you'll have that. Because he has legality in your life because of what you believe and speak in the earth realm. All right. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCasey.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.